แหล่งเรียนรู้ในโลกดิจิทัลและการเปลี่ยนแปลงของความรู้ในการพัฒนาทางเศรษฐกิจและสังคมโดยดรจอร์ดอบนีศาสตราจารย์อคันตุกะแม็กเวลส์คูออฟซิติเซนชิพแอนด์พับบิกแอฟเฟอร์ซิลิคิสยูนิเวอร์ซิตี้สหรัฐอเมริกาการก้าวข้ามจากศักยภาพไปสู่การปฏิบัติจำเป็นต้องเสริมสร้างระบบนวัตกรรมของชาติที่มีการทำงานร่วมกันตั้งแต่นโยบายสถาบันและกิจกรรมที่สอดรับกับนวัตกรรมทั้งในส่วนของรัฐบาลภาคธุรกิจสถาบันการศึกษาและองค์กรพัฒนาเอกชนการสร้างเทคโนโลยีและนวัตกรรมเพื่อการพัฒนาประเทศ The challenge is that the manufactured exports of Thailand, which have been really driving the growth of the country, have stalled in recent years. And the emergence of China, which is seen by many business people and economists as perhaps providing the solution of the future, is unlikely. It's not likely to do so, at least over the medium term. So that's the challenge. The opportunity is that Asian emerging economies, ASEAN, for example, China, India. They provide wonderful opportunities for Thailand and for the region, but the characteristics of these markets and the consumers are really very different than the kinds of people and markets that Thailand has manufactured for in the past and at present in the U.S., in EU, and in Japan. What that means is that Thai firms looking to the future need to not just think about exporting, but need to think about innovation, innovating. Innovating for very different kind of markets, very different kinds of customers, and that means really thinking about innovation a little bit differently than the way we traditionally think about it. So that's basically what I'd like to talk about. Thailand is really one of the remarkable success stories in terms of its growth over time. At one point in the late 80s and 90s, it was the fastest-growing economy in the world, and the Thai economy has been able to combine growth, stability. And dealing with issues of poverty in a way that very few countries have. Then came the Asian crisis in 97-98. Had an enormous impact. It caused problems, but it didn't take away all these gains of development. And Thailand regained development, but at a kind of a slower pace. Since the Asian crisis, the Thai economy has been growing slower, both for domestic reasons and how the outside world has changed. And Thailand is now faced with, as Dr. Poramati in fact mentioned, this issue of the middle-income trap, and this really relates to the issue of innovation and knowledge. So the challenge is that the manufactured exports, which have been the key driver of growth, have stalled. Stalled in terms of upgrading, of improving the kinds of products and production processes that Thailand uses. This is the essence of the middle-income trap, and the emergence of China as the largest market for Thailand, I'm afraid, is not going to be quite the solution that some people think. So, what's the product challenge? If I look at the past 30, 40 years, Thailand's manufactured exports, the kinds of goods, services, products that Thailand exports, have diversified. There are many more different kinds, and they are much more sophisticated. But Thailand, in recent years, has been losing its comparative advantage of low wages, of low costs. Costs are rising, wages are rising, and that's a good thing. That's what development is all about. But it means that using low labor cost, low cost of producing things because of the workers, is an advantage that Thailand is now losing. Unfortunately, Thai firms, unlike the firms, for example, in Taiwan and Korea, have not used the advantage they had of this low cost of labor. To invest in knowledge-based innovation, new products, new technology. If we look at Korea and Taiwan as examples, their growth continued. They didn't face this middle-income trap, and a main reason for that was because they used the advantage they had, the low cost of labor, to invest in knowledge, to invest in innovation, in technology. Thai firms have not done that to the same extent, and that's the source of one of the key problems we face. เราควรเรียนรู้และต้องคิดค้นสิ่งใหม่ใหม่ให้เกิดความแตกต่างจากในอดีตเพื่อให้ก้าวทัดต่อโลกอนาคตได้แนวคิดและกลยุทธ์ด้านการวิจัยเพื่อการพัฒนาประเทศ There is a famous curve by Stanley s h e who was the founder and CEO of uh, Acer, that shows the relationship between value added, which is on the vertical scale, the higher you go, the higher the value, and different parts of the production system or the value chain. And if we look at Thailand, most Thai firms tend to be around this manufacturing end. We have not done a particularly good job in moving into areas like design, branding, research and development, which is 
knowledge-based, knowledge-intensive. It's also, unfortunately, where the value is added. If we look at the developed countries, US, EU, they have been reducing their share of Thai imports significantly. But China's rise is a little bit misleading. And so I'd like to take just a moment on China because it's also a kind of a shorthand for many things going on in Asia. The market, if we look at it from the point of view of Thai business in China, is really not shaped by the size of the Chinese economy or Chinese growth. We hear this over and over again, how big the Chinese economy is. It's overtaken the Japan. It's overtaken or is going to overtake US, growing at 8, 9, 10%. That really is not so important for us. What we need to know is what is the net demand for imports? What does China want to buy from us? And how likely are they to buy a lot of the things that we produce? And if we look at the Chinese economy from that point of view, it's not a particularly good market now and is unlikely to be in the medium term future. The household consumption share of GDP has fallen in China from about 55% in the 90s to less than 35% measured a year ago. Essentially what that means is Chinese consumers, people like us buying things, is really a very small share, a much smaller share of the Chinese economy than every other major country. And the Chinese understand that and they're trying to make the change to have consumption become a much more important part of the economy. It's very difficult to do that. It has to do with politics much more than economics. China imports a lot from Thailand. As I mentioned, it is the number one market for Thai goods. There is no indication that China is going to do that over the near term. That's the problem. That's the challenge. Now, what about the opportunity? Well, the opportunity is we're in a good neighborhood. Basically, Asian emerging markets, and that means primarily ASEAN, China, India, present significant growth opportunities in the future for us. But the characteristics of these markets and consumers are really quite different than what we're used to in the past. And this is where the innovation issue and knowledge will come in. The developed economies, US and EU, are slow-growing economies. The growth is much stronger in emerging Asia, in developing Asia, although slower than we thought it would be. So if we look at where the growth is in the world, it is coming from this part of the world. But the trick is, even though all this growth is occurring, all this growth will be occurring, the incomes of Asian consumers are going to continue to be really quite low as compared with developed economies. So the long-term trend, we're looking at this large increase in population and incomes, and the projection is that maybe 40% of global consumer spending is going to come from here, from this part of the world, especially ASEAN, China, and India in the next 15, 20 years. But most of this growth is gonna be the low end of income. The average income we're looking at in Asia in the next 15 years is probably about $6,000. Now compare that with the average income in the US and EU, roughly $40,000, let's say 15 years hence. Very different kind of consumer, very different amount of money to spend. So it means that the vast majority of the population in this growing area in the next 10, 15 years are gonna be low income or on the lower end of the middle income scale. There are also other characteristics of the markets here that we don't meet when we export to the US and EU. Fragmented markets, different parts of the country are not as well connected in many of these countries as they are, for example, in Europe. Now, this actually presents a very good opportunity for us, but the response, meaning innovation, has to take a different form than the way we normally approach it. It means that we have to think about innovating for these new customers, for ASEAN economic community, for China, for India, not just exporting. But it's a different concept of innovation than we normally think about. It's not just innovation that's focused on research and development and high technology and high skills and high knowledge. And that's really an opportunity. ควรสร้างความสัมพันธ์ในด้านความคิดจากหลายๆฝ่ายเพื่อมาใช้ในการแก้ไขปัญหาเพื่อสร้างโอกาสในการพัฒนาเศรษฐกิจและสังคมของประเทศต่อไป